Sam will give the talk. Yeah. All right, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Sam, and I'll be talking about private functional PRFs today. Uh, so this is joint work with Dan Bonet and Harp Montgomery. Uh, okay, so let me start off the talk by recalling the notion of pseudorandom functions. Uh, so pseudorandom functions, or PRFs, is a, are, are very basic building blocks in cryptography. So it's just a, a function, uh, a key function, uh, with some associated domain and range, such that the following two distributions are indistinguishable. Okay, so in the first distribution, an adversary makes a number of adaptive evaluation queries to the challenger, and a challenger answers the adversary by uh, evaluating the real uh, PRF uh, function, f, uh, to each of the adversary's queries. Uh, in the second distribution, an adversary makes a number of adaptive evaluation queries, and uh, this time, uh, the challenger evaluates a truly random function to each of the adversary's queries. Okay, and PRF security states that these two distributions are indistinguishable. Right, so uh, recently, uh, three independent works, uh, Bonet Waters 13, uh, Boyle et al. 13, and Caius et al. 13, uh, introduced this notion of constrained PRFs. Uh, so constrained PRFs are just like regular PRFs, but they have an additional uh, functionality. Uh, they have an additional algorithm called uh, the constraint algorithm. And so what is this constraint algorithm? Uh, it basically takes in a regular PRF TK and also a constraint function or a constraint predicate F uh, and uh, generates another PRF T uh, that we denote K sub F and we call a constraint a key. And this constraint key can be used to evaluate the PRF at all points uh, X in the domain uh, where F of X equals to one. Okay, so it's basically taking uh, a regular PRF TK that can be used to evaluate the PRF at all points in the domain, and it's generating a more restricted key that can only evaluate the PRF at only uh, a subset of the domain. All right, so for correctness, we require that uh, the, the um, PRF evaluation using the constraint key at points X, where f of X equals to one, uh, this should yield uh, the correct PRF, uh, the real PRF uh, evaluation at X. And for security, uh, we require that um, the PRF evaluation uh, at points x, where f of x equals to zero, uh, so this should look indistinguishable from random to an adversary who is given the constraint key. Right, uh, so constraint PRFs are very useful uh, notions in cryptography, um, it has many applications. So for instance, uh, it can be used to construct the identity-based key exchange, uh, it gives rise to optimal broadcast encryption schemes, and so on. Uh, so for this talk, uh, I'll be talking about uh, a special family of constrained uh, PRFs call, uh, called uh, punctuable PRFs. And in particular, uh, these family of constrained uh, PRFs have, uh, been, have, been, uh, have been used uh, quite widely in the puncture programming paradigm of Sahai and Waters for constructing schemes from indistinguishable early on All right, uh, so uh, since I'll be talking about punctuable PRFs, let's define these um, a little bit more specifically. Uh, so these are just a constraint uh, PRFs uh, where we restrict uh, the family of constraint functions to just be uh, point functions or a complement of point functions. Uh, so a constraint, constraint function is defined with respect to a, a single point uh, in the domain, uh, C in this case. Uh, so, on, so the constraint function on input X uh, evaluates to one on inputs uh, that are not equal to C and uh, evaluates to zero on inputs that are equal to C. So all this is basically saying is uh, you, with the puncture key, you can evaluate the PRF at all points except for uh, at, at the puncture point, except for at the single point. Uh, so it turns out that puncturable PRFs uh, can be constructed from standard UGM tree-based construction in a pretty straightforward way. Um, but uh, one thing to note about this construction is that uh, the puncture key uh, must necessarily contain uh, information about the actual puncture point C. Okay, so a natural question that we can actually ask is, can we construct uh, a puncturable PRF where the puncture key does not leak any information about the underlying puncture point C? And so uh, more generally, this is, uh, can, we can ask the question of, can we build a constrained PRF uh, where the constrained key does not leak any information about the associated constraint function F? Okay, and this is the question that, uh, that Bonet et al. asked uh, recently. And so how do we actually formalize this notion? Uh, so it's pretty simple, right? So uh, we can define it in terms of security game where an adversary first commits uh, to a pair of functions, uh, F0 and F1. Uh, these are constrained functions. And in the first, uh, secure, in the first game, uh, the challenger uh, generates a constrained function, a uh, constrained key with respect to uh, the function F0. And in the second uh, game, the challenger um, generates a constrained key with respect to uh, the function F1. 
Okay, and our privacy requirement states that these two distributions should, should be indistinguishable. All right, uh, so uh, for this talk, uh, I'll be focusing mainly on uh, private punctuable PRFs. Uh, for in the next talk, uh, you'll hear from Yule about more general uh, privately constrained PR, uh, PRFs for uh, more general set of constraints. All right, uh, so, okay, so, so for this talk, we'll be focusing on private, private puncturing. Um, so, this is basic, um, so this is basically a punctual PRF that satisfies these three properties. Uh, so for correctness, we require that if you evaluate the PRF uh, using uh, the puncture key, then this should yield the correct PRF uh, output at all points x that's, that are not, that's not equal to uh, the function point C. And it should satisfy pseudo randomness, uh, so the PRF evaluation at the puncture point uh, should uh, be uh, Uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, okay. Sorry. All right. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, for sort of randomness, we require that uh, the PRF evaluation at the puncture point uh, should look indistinguishable for random to an adversary who is given the puncture puncture key. And for privacy, we're <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh. Okay. Hello? Okay. Uh. Okay, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> For privacy, we require that uh, the puncture uh, key to, to not leak any information about the puncture point C. All right, um, so what does this privacy uh, give us? So why is this an interesting notion? Uh, so there are a number of applications. Uh, so many of them are highlighted in the original paper, uh, the, BL the BLW paper that introduced the notion. Uh, so for this talk, um, I'll just talk about one particular application. Uh, and this is for, uh, this is application to um, to uh, private keyword search in a uh, distributed database. So one way of viewing uh, private punctuable PRFs is uh, as an advanced form of distributed uh, point functions. Okay, so distributed point functions, or uh, DPFs, uh, is a notion that was introduced by Gilboa and Insha in 2014. And the idea is the following, right? So you start off uh, with a point function, uh, P sub C, okay? And we basically secret share uh, this function uh, into uh, two distributed point functions, uh, F0 and F1. So let me put a tilde there, uh, just to distinguish it from the PRF. And uh, these two functions uh, have the property that if you evaluate each of these functions uh, separately uh, on an input X, and basically sum up the result together, then you should basically get a point function. Okay, so, you, so on input X, that is equal to C. Uh, if you sum them up, then you should get a non-zero value. And if you, uh, for inputs that are not equal to C, if you sum them up, then you should basically get zero. Right, so you can actually instantiate uh, distributed point functions using uh, private puncturing uh, by defining the first function to just be the regular PRF evaluation function using the regular PRF key k. And you just define the second function to be uh, the PRF evaluation using the puncture key. Okay, and by uh, PRF, uh, by, by uh, correctness of our construction, um, if you evaluate uh, the first and the second function separately and just, uh, and I guess in this case, subtract the result, then you should get a non-zero value uh, for inputs x that are equal to c, and it should get zero for inputs that are not equal to c. Oh, and I forgot to mention the, the security requirement, <laughs> that uh, the security requirement for distributed point functions is that uh, for an adversary who is given only one of the two functions, uh, then the adversary should not learn any information about the underlying point c. All right, uh, so one difference between uh, a, a DPF and a private punctual PRF uh, is the following. Right, so um, for a distributed point function as set up, uh, once, the uh, once the point function is, uh, is set, you, you come up with uh, these two functions, F0 and F F1, uh, simultaneously. So you have to generate them uh, together. Uh, but for a private punctual PRF, uh, you have this sort of um, adaptive property where you can, uh, where even before, in the offline phase, uh, even before you commit to the point function uh, C, to the point C, you can actually just, just instantiate uh, the first function, 
um, by generating just a regular PRF PK. Okay, and at a later point in time, once you decide on the point C, uh, then you can actually instantiate the second function uh, by generating the, the punctured key. Okay, and this leads to a number of applications. Um, so one application of uh, distributed point functions uh, is in the setting of um, distributed database uh, in private keyword search. Um, so in this setting, we have two servers um, holding a, a database of uh, keywords, uh, so W1 all the way through WN. And we have a user who wants to check whether a particular keyword is contained in the database. Okay, so uh, W sub J. And, and uh, the user wants to uh, check uh, whether a keyword is contained in the database without uh, revealing what the keyword W sub J is to each of the servers. So one way of doing this is to define a point function uh, with respect to the keyword W sub J uh, and basically generate two distribu distributed uh, point functions, F0 and F1, with respect to this point function. Okay, and basically uh, sends these two functions to the servers and uh, the server uh, evaluates uh, the, the, these functions uh, to each of the keywords uh, in the database, uh, sums them up, and basically um, sends them back uh, to the user. And the user can just add these two results up. And if the result is non-zero, then it knows that the keyword W sub J is contained in the database. And if, it, if, it, if the result is zero, then it knows that uh, the, the keyword is not contained in the database. Uh, all right. And the privacy uh, property of DPFs uh, guarantees that uh, each of the servers do not learn information about the keyword W sub J. Right, so uh, using um, private functional PRFs, you can actually emulate this protocol, um, but, we have, but uh, this offline, uh, um, online um, property of, of, of private functional PRFs translates to the setting. Okay, so uh, in the setting, um, um, the user can, act, can just, uh, even before uh, knowing uh, which a keyword to search the database, it can just generate a, a real PRF uh, key and just sends it, sends it to one of the challenge, to one of the servers, and the server, and to a single server, and the server can uh, follow the protocol by applying uh, the PRF on each of the keywords and just sum, sum, the, re sum, uh, sum the results and sends them back. And the server can actually just go offline, it does not get involved in the protocol. Okay, and at a later point in time, when, this, when the user wants to query the database uh, on a particular keyword, then, um, then the user can just generate a, a punctured key with respect to the keyword W sub J and just sends it to the other, other, to the other server. Okay, um, right, and the, server and the other server basically just follows the protocol by, some, by applying the function to each of the keywords and just summing up the results. Okay, so this has a property that, uh, that the user actually just has to interact with one of the servers, and, uh, and one of the servers can actually just be offline. All right, um, so let's talk, just talk about uh, one of the uh, constructions. So uh, punctual PRFs uh, prior to this work um, um, had a very extreme state of affairs. Uh, so to actually get public puncturing, um, you, you just require one-way functions using the GGM tree-based construction. To actually get private puncturing, you actually had to go all the way to multi-layer maps, or IO. So this, is, uh, this construction is due to uh, the original BLW paper. And this work basically, uh, we basically uh, push uh, the minimum uh, assumption that's required uh, for private puncturing to just be LWE. Okay, just to, we just construct it from lattices. Okay, and of course the natural open problem um, is to can we actually move it even further? Um, so since uh, we can get public puncturing from one-way functions, uh, there isn't really a reason why we can't get private puncturing from, uh, from one-way functions, and I think this is a really nice open problem that I just wanted to mention. All right, so let me just uh, give a quick overview of, our of what we do in our construction. Uh, so we just work uh, with learning with errors. So uh, for a uniformly generated matrix A um, and uh, a randomly sampled uh, vector S and E from some low norm error distribution, uh, LW just says that, th that the following two distributions are indistinguishable. Um, so in the first distribution, um, th the adversary gets the public matrix A and also this uh, noisy vector matrix pro uh, product, S times A plus E. And in the second distribution, the adversary um, gets the public matrix A and also this time uh, a uniformly sampled um, vector U. And LW just states that these two distributions are indistinguishable. All right, uh, so the, the uh, 
So the basic technique that we just used uh, is uh, this matrix circuit encodings that was first used by Bonnet et al. in 2014 in the setting of attribute-based encryption. Uh, so this is just an encoding scheme. Uh, so you start off, uh, okay, so you have an uh, encoding scheme for uh, scalar elements, so ring elements or field elements. Uh, so to encode an element uh, X sub I uh, with respect to a public uh, LW matrix A sub I, then you just compute uh, this vector S uh, times uh, AI plus XI times G, where G is this uh, public uh, gadget matrix, and you just add some noise to it. And the benefit of encoding um, and encoding elements this way is that it allows for uh, homomorphic operations on the encodings. And in particular, uh, for a circuit F, uh, we can just uh, homomorphically derive uh, the encoding of the, of the value F of X uh, okay. uh, with respect to the public uh, matrix A sub F. Okay, and a nice property of this homomorphic operations is that uh, we have an, an analogous homomorphic operation on the public matrices, uh, A1 through AL, um, and we can, uh, and uh, to, to derive uh, the matrix A sub F. Okay, and this uh, public uh, matrix uh, homomorphic operation does not uh, require any information about the underlying encoded values or the encodings. Right, um, so in particular, if you actually encode uh, our puncture point, the string C of length N, um, uh, in uh, using this encoding, uh, then we can actually just compute uh, the equality check circuit uh, with a PRF input X hard-coded inside the circuit and, and get an encoding of the, of the result of the equality check circuit uh, on the puncture key, on, on the puncture point. Okay, in particular, this uh, equality check circuit uh, will output zero if uh, X and C uh, are different and it will evaluate to one if uh, X and C are uh, equal, okay? And, and the basic idea of our PRF is to just, um, just define our puncture key uh, to be these uh, encodings of the puncture point, a C. Okay, and if we actually define our PRF to be, the LW, to be um, what looks like an LW sample uh, with respect to uh, the matrix A sub X, uh, so we define our PRF to be S transpose A sub X uh, plus E, and then uh, using the puncture key, you can actually just derive the PRF output uh, by running the equality check circuit on the encodings. And so uh, since uh, PRF have to be a determinist function, we basically, instead of uh, adding noise, we uh, just round the result. And uh, it turns out with some small modifications, uh, we can actually prove uh, this uh, PRF to be secure. And this is actually a special case of, uh, of a constrained PRF construction due to Berkowski and Vaikuntanathan. And this actually leads to a public a puncturable PRF. And the reason why this is public is because to operate on these, uh, on these encodings homomorphically, you actually have to know um, the information, you actually have to know what uh, the underlying uh, encoded values are. Okay, so to actually uh, get private puncturing, uh, we borrow the ideas from the predicate encryption constructions of Gorbunov of et al. Um, so before we encoded in, these, uh, in this encoding, we just encrypted using a fully homomorphic encryption scheme. Okay, and then we just encode it. Yep, and then we basically just uh, compute the equality check circuit uh, inside the FHG homomorphic operations. Right. So uh, a problem uh, with this, a problem with this approach is that uh, the equality at the end of the day, uh, after you finish the equality check circuit, uh, the result of the of the equality check uh, check is encoded inside the FHG encryption. Okay, so there is there must be a way to actually extract this information. And, result, and we resolve this by just, uh, just publish, just including as in the puncture key, uh, FHE uh, the encodings of FHE decryption key. And we use the fact that uh, to actually multiply, uh, for these uh, homomorphic operations, to actually multiply two encodings, you actually need just one of the encodings to one of the encoded values and not the other. Um, and this allows us to compute um, inner products of the FHE, um, of the, the, the encryption of the quality check circuit and the, and the FHG secret key. And we use the property that uh, for FHG decryption uh, is, a, is uh, a, a, inner, a noisy inner product. And there's some technicalities here that uh, we have to um, actually take care of uh, the noise that's, uh, that comes out of the FHG decryption. And, that's actually, and uh, for this, uh, due to time constraints, I will not be able to actually talk about this. Uh, so I'll just refer to the paper. And, um, yep. and to conclude, uh, so I want to mention a concurrent work uh, by Kennedy and Chen. So I think uh, 
you'll hear from uh, ELA uh, in a second, in the next talk. Uh, so, th so the techniques are actually quite different. So they use uh, instances of GGH15 multi-year maps that are still reducible to LWE. Uh, so we use techniques uh, from uh, attribute-based encryption and predicate encryption. Um, so I also want to mention some extensions. Uh, so we were able to extend uh, there's these uh, the, the techniques that are used in this work to get uh, watermarkable PRFs uh, from LWE, and this was only previously known uh, from obfuscation. So you'll hear more about this in the RUM session tomorrow. And so let me just conclude with some open problems. Um, so um, I guess an, a nice open problem, like I mentioned, is can we actually get private functional PRFs from other assumptions like DBH pairings or like one or just even more functions? Um, so are there other applications of privacy uh, in constrained PRFs? And also, um, so I wasn't able to talk about the, <laughs> the new techniques uh, for this talk, um, but can we actually apply the techniques uh, in this work to the setting of predicate encryption, for instance? I think this, these are very, are very nice open problems. Okay, and with that, uh, I will conclude. Okay, so are there any questions? So are private punctual PRFs known to imply anything stronger than one-way functions, like OT or PKE? Uh, yeah, so for, for actually uh, constraint PRFs uh, for two keys actually uh, implies IO. Um, but for punctual PRFs, uh, you can actually just uh, publish only a single key, right? So if you actually publish uh, two, two punctured keys, then you can evaluate the PRF on all points. So you can't actually have a, 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 a well-defined notion of security uh, in that notion. So uh, does that answer your question? No, the question is if the existence of private punctual PRFs is known to imply anything beyond one-way functions. Oh, oh uh, no, I don't think uh, it's not known, yeah. So the, the template you described didn't seem to use anything very special about equality. Can you say a little bit about why you ca what, what, what like, uh, you know, restricts you to, to point puncturing rather than general functions? Um, well, well, so yeah, so I was hiding all the details under the rug, but, um, but first uh, we weren't able to get the parameters to work out. So the parameters are kind of uh, becomes circular. So um, that w we couldn't find the parameter that worked out and um, and and um, so to actually get uh, and we, we thought it was quite uh, so since we can't we on can only publish a single key anyway so we thought that uh, actually private puncturing is actually uh, more natural so um, yeah all right I hope that answers your question Did you look at uh, at PRFs that have an uh, unbounded inputs and to achieve this uh, private puncturing? It seems that these techniques do not extend naturally to unbounded input, right? Because they reveal the the size of the input. Right, right. So, so for pr for uh, punctual PRFs, you actually need uh, the puncture point to be fixed uh, because we because we need uh, the puncture key to be finite. Um, so, right. So, so the techniques used in this work does not. Uh, I'm not sure if it's even well defined for um, for unbounded inputs. I mean, in, in the challenge experiment, if I give you two x's of uh, varying length, then the depending on the size of, of the key that I get, I can distinguish easily because it, it the size of the key would be kind of linear in the in the size of the input. So the BRF has to be a fixed input, no? Right, right, right. Yes, yeah. I think right, okay. right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. 